everyone thought Steve here with first others now here at the Plano District event here with 9128 it can robotics currently ranked third at this event at the end of day one they were mercury finalists last year at states and also rookie all-star at worlds last year what an amazing robot you guys have so far i'm here with abad and hamza to talk about their amazing robot really excited to get through here here on behind the bumpers this video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Abad, talk to us through your design process and the iterations you've made and going forward and what do you guys have today? So the main design process was trying to make anything as simple, everything as simple as possible. We went with a very similar mechanism to what we learned last year. We saw that an arm mechanism with a simple chain worked really well and was really consistent. And we decided that we wanted to have a very similar design. So this arm powers our shooter. Uh, it just pivots the shooter so we're able to shoot from various, various distances. And the shooter has gone through many different iterations. Uh, the shooter has gone through, I believe, four. One with a side shooter. Uh, the side shooter was then directly attached to this arm. And then we went through a top-down shooter because we saw it was able to shoot faster and farther away because we wanted to test out uh, shooting from around center field for passing and all of those options. We also went with the same uh, uh, drivetrain ratio, uh, 25 by 25, uh, besides uh, for the base, but we also had a behind the bumper uh, intake. Help behind the bumper, like that. <laughs> <laughs> behind the bumper intake that allows us to not, when we're intake and we don't want to get hit and causing it to break, we have a brace here and the three more attached. And that just allows us to quickly grab the bumper has uh, the intake has funnels on it, and that just allows us to intake and shoot relatively quickly. And I can see here that you guys have a bit of a gap between your bumper and your intake. Does that cause any problems with like flexibility or anything like that? No, the intake was designed to have uh, be connected on the inside of the drivetrain because on the outside of the drivetrain it would not be allowed. So this little gap is uh, less than uh, is from this edge of the drivetrain to this is less than eight inches. So that is allowed in the rule. And your gear ratio, seems like you guys have two sprockets. Why did you guys go with one instead of two? So we have two sprockets here. We saw that one of the, we weren't able to run both sprockets at the same time, and we saw there were many problems. We also saw that one motor was plenty enough to uh, bring the arm up, and we had to get rid of one motor due to our ratchet and pawl mechanism. Let me take off the sponsor panel. And you can see our ratchet and pawl mechanism, and that lets us uh, climb and lock in because we saw a problem when we were climbing that when we were when we were done climbing and the robot was disabled, the robot fell down before five seconds. And uh, we made a quick iteration, added a ratchet and pawl, and that locks us in with a simple servo. Right, what an amazing robot and design you guys have done so far. Hand it off to Hamza. Talk to me about your programming with your arm, because arms can be pretty complicated, but it, to be honest, it looks similar to last year's robot with modifications for this game. Talk to us through it. Of course, and since last year, our programming has actually grown a ton. Comparatively, um, last year we were using kind of an awkward mix between time-based and command-based program. This year, we finally gone completely into command-based and um, been able to learn from some great mentors how to um, efficiently kind of navigate our programming that way. Um, currently, we're using um, still a pretty simplified um, version of programming. We don't have many sensors on this robot. We've actually stripped down to only um, use the limelight for any censorship. So, um, for example, if we want to sense when we have um, a a disc inside of our intake, we'll use the current limits on the transfer and the intake um, to, or we'll use the um, current system to make sure or check for the current spikes. And then that'll allow us to know when we have one. And then also just before we shoot, we outtake just a little bit. That way it's not still touching the flywheels. So we're still using simple solutions like that in programming. Um, we're reducing a lot of the failure points. Um, since wiring is still a little bit of an issue for us, we have a lot less wires that we need to manage and things like that. Um, but other than that, we're um, really a lot more sophisticated this year. Um, we also have Limelight. Um, we use Photon Vision this year for um, auto tracking um, and auto alignment. And um, we're using Path Planner currently for all of our um, 
Auton movements, and we're currently trying to move into using Choreo. And how has that integration worked with you guys so far? Pretty well. Um, since it's, again, a pretty simple design, um, it, our programming's been extremely robust. Um, usually we'd be having to um, kind of mess with our programming throughout the competition over and over again, but this year, um, we didn't, or especially this comp, we didn't have to uh, mess with it much at all, and our Auton was extremely robust, so. And are we able to see this robot do some of its movements? Uh, of course. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the shooter. Our shooter has an R1 button, and that R1 button is just a... When we're lining up at the bottom of the speaker and we're lining up with the subwoofer, uh, it just auto-shoots into the refugee. So, we also have an amp position with triangle. And we have a, the same shoot button, shoots it into the amp, and the position was uh, already programmed, allows a really quick tracking. And with the limelight, go back down, hit our uh, red trigger. Uh, the limelight allows us to see where we are in the relation to the amp, so we know when we are like perfectly in the center to be able to shoot. So everything is just run with these, the two neos with these wheels. Everything else just there's no pass through or anything like that. It's just there take is, up and into. There is a transfer system right here. This is run by a vortex right here in the back, and it just goes from the intake into the transfer, and then this is taped back to allow for like uh, essentially a feed so it doesn't get stuck in between the churros. Right. And then it goes from that to the uh, wheels and the wheels shoot it. And the wheels do everything for you guys. Yeah, and I want uh, something really cool about our wheels is they are run at different speed. If Hamza wants to talk about that. Of course, so we did a lot of testing with our shooter speeds to make sure that we were getting the most accuracy that we could. Um, and as you know, um, there's kind of that um, gyroscop gyroscopic stability right. when you're throwing an object and you keep it spinning. So right now we have one of our shooters, um, I think set to around 80 RPM and the other set to around 50. Um, and it changes depending on different positions. But um, for these two, um, that allows us to fire the disc um, in a spinning motion. That keeps it a lot more stable. Um, we did a ton of testing at our lab um, to make sure that we were kind of tuning our speeds to the correct places um, or to the correct speeds for the correct place. Um, currently we have uh, linear interpolation going on in our code. So for different positions, in case we don't want to shoot right in front of the speaker, um, we have linear interpolation to figure out um, kind of different points and um, all the in-between values for both our shooter and our arm angle. So. Beautiful, amazing robot, amazing programming. And thank you so much for the explanation. But well, I want to hand it off back to you real quick because you guys were an amazing team last year and y'all were a rookie team. Now this year, second year, and you guys have another team next to you, a rookie team. What has this growth been like for you guys ever since last year? Again, fine, rookie all-star at Worlds, finalists at Mercury, talk us through it. So the growth is typically due to our growth of sponsors and people who are willing to support us. We got a lot of uh, sponsorships from LXT, TI, all these people were able to fund us money to get us a warehouse. And this warehouse incredibly increased all of our capabilities and all our production possibilities. That allowed us to start a second team and the second team is doing great. They are currently ranked fifth in this competition and we think both of us are flying with, uh, with great colors. Uh, Vulture here and uh, Raptor over there. Both of them have a very similar design or the ro robot is the exact same, but that is done for a learning possible uh, learning for the rookie, t uh, rookie team. And all of this allows them to uh, just learn, iterate, and hopefully get them up to what the senior year, uh, senior team, what they can do and hopefully make a better uh, team. So what advice would you give to upcoming rookie teams or current rookie teams that are looking to be just like y'all? Uh, my advice would be keeping everything simple. You don't want a really, really big robot. You don't want stuff that are like incredibly complex, like really difficult transfers or like pass-throughs and all of that. You want to keep it simple. A simple robot will take you a lot farther than a really complex robot that doesn't work. Well, 9128, thank you guys so much for walking us through your robot. Really excited to see how far you guys go tomorrow. Good luck to you guys and thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.